Hi everybody, in this video we're going to be taking a close look at the PowerBox Auto Servo Matching feature. So I'm using a PowerBox Mercury, however the Auto Servo Matching is available across a wide range of products. So pretty much all the PowerBox units such as the Mercury, the Competition and the Royal have this feature. Now, as you may or may not be aware, um, servo matching can be done manually and I showed that facility in one of my earlier Mercury videos. In this video we're going to be taking the easy option of using the auto servo matching feature just to see how well it works. And um, I've set up a little test jig here in front of us. I've got two servos. So these two servos are both basically on the same uh, function. So I've just got them on my aileron stick. And what I've done, I've got two different servo horns. So the balls are spaced at slightly different distances between the center. So if I get my uh, Michitoyo calipers out, we can see on the first servo, which is actually going to be my slave servo, um, it's around about 11 millimeters or so uh, from the center of the servo to the ball, about 11 millimeters. And the other servo is around about 16 millimeters from memory close enough so yeah it's about 16 millimeters and because the balls are spaced at different distances away from the uh, middle of the servo horn we're going to get non-linear travel between the two servos now normally you wouldn't do this but I've set this up as a test jig to see how well the auto serving match matching can cope with such a situation okay in front of us, I've also got an old analog multimeter. This meter is about 40 years old. It's actually my first multimeter I bought when I was a, teen a young teenager, when I first started on electronics. And we're going to be using that today so it can give us a um, sort of a better indication of what the servo current's doing. So this is going to be our primary master servo, and this servo here is going to be our slave servo. So we're going to match this servo to this servo. And this meter is measuring the current of this server only. So if I actually move my uh, stick on my radio at the moment, you'll see the meter start to deflect. And you'll see it move over to almost full scale deflection on the scale there. And just to give everybody an indication, we're using the 0 to 250 milliamp scale. So 0 to 250 milliamps is full scale deflection, so a quarter of an amp. So as you can see, it's drawing, depending on where we are with the positioning of the servo, it can draw up to about 225 milliamps. Um, there we go, I'll put it back again a bit. So there's about 225 milliamps peak there. So after we servo match it, we want to see whether it reduces the servo current. So in theory, when, when these are uh, matched, it shouldn't draw as much current as it's drawing now. And depending on how well the arms are placed and whatever, uh, will mean basically less currents drawn. In this case, because we've got the non-linear travel and non-linear um, horn set up, we'll never get the current, say, very close to zero. Um, you'll notice the idle current in this position is about um, 30 milliamps, or just under 30 milliamps. But if I move it, there's spots in the servo travel where you'll see the current climbs up. And again, that's just indicating that the horns are not, or the travel's not matched between the two servos. So you can see if I, you know, wiggle it, you know, slowly, you can see the meter climbing up towards full scale deflection almost. So almost 250 milliamps. So we're peaking about 225, depending on where the servo horns are. Okay, now. Let's delve into the menu and activate the servo matching. So I'll just hold down my uh, power button to access the main menu. And we're in the main menu of the Mercury. And there we have the servo matching menu. Now these two servos, I've plugged this into port A of the Mercury. And this one's port B. Um, just a simple setup. So you can imagine these two servos might be, say, um, both fitted to say one aileron for instance. Now, when we're in the servo matching menu, the first thing it's asking us is the output slot. 
So this will be the output slot for our master servo, this guy here. So he's plugged into port A. So we'll just leave it at port A. The next thing we have to do is go down and initialize the output. The reason we have to do this, if I select that, you'll see a little graph at the bottom. So what this does, it tells the servo matching program how much travel is available for this servo. So it's just basically calibrating itself. So you just move your stick left and right or up and down a couple of times. And you'll notice the uh, two tri the left hand and the right hand triangles have now moved a little bit further out. Indicating the amount of travel I've set for this servo. Oh, one other thing to be aware of, these servos are not hard mounted. I've just used some double sided tape. So they do move a little bit on the surface. So in theory, if they were hard mounted, the current would actually be higher. Uh, because they flex a little bit on the mounting surface, um, the current won't be quite as high. So it, we're just using this example just to prove whether the survey matching feature works. So the double-sided tape is fine for this example. Okay, once we've initialized the output, you'll notice a little OK on the screen. So it's happy with that. Now we can go down to start matching. However, that'll start manual survey matching. And I did show that in one of my previous Mercury videos. And we might have a look at that afterwards um, and uh, see what it does to the graph. If we actually go in there at the moment, you'll notice there's no real settings. Um, there's uh, five little triangles across the bottom of that graph, uh, but they haven't moved there in the default positions. Later on, uh, we might have a look at this same graph and see how they've changed. So I'll just get out of this. So this is if you want to reverse the output of the server, which I don't want to do. However, let's go into auto matching. So it's asking us to connect our servos and linkages, which we've already got. And you'll notice up the top it says select the master servo. So the master is this guy here. So he's plugged into port A. Uh, we're going to select two more, up to two more additional servos. So with this auto, serving, auto servo matching feature, it can support up to um, three servos in total, including the master. So let's select for auxiliary one, we're going to select port B. So don't forget our um, matching servo to be matched is plugged into port B. And if we had a third servo, we would select it here in auxiliary two. But we don't actually have a third servo. Uh, there's a little, a little current indicator at the bottom. However, like I said, this meter is measuring the current for this servo. So we can just ignore it. Let's start matching. Let's um, select start matching. All right, I might just support the servos a little bit because the tape might pop off. So currently it's running through the automatic servo matching feature. So the system basically tries a couple of different positions and, and tries to measure the minimum current required by adjusting the slave servo to match the master servo. And normally you won't have to hold the servos because normally the servos would be a hard fix in your aircraft. And we're doing a bit of a dodgy here, but it'll it'll show us how well it works. Okay, auto matching finished. That didn't take too long. Okay, let's now move the servos. So um, I'll just get back out of the menu. Go back to the main menu structure. Let's have a look at the meter now. Now remember we were getting around about 225 milliamps in certain positions when we were moving the servos before. So we're just measuring this, this servo current here, not, not that one. So let's have a look after servo matching whether it's made any difference or not. And you can see straight away the uh, servo current's getting up to maybe about a hundred. Let me try that again. A bit over a hundred milliamps in that position. So it's well under the 200 and um, was it 225 before. So it's at least half the servo current for this particular example. So you can see it's made quite a substantial difference to the amount of current drawn. I mean, the meter's predominantly in the bottom third of its travel uh, for the whole servo range, whereas before 
it was in the top half of the travel. So it's made a substantial amount of difference. So it has worked, it has matched it. Now this setup's not ideal because we do have non-linear arms. Um, but it's just to show you how well it can work. Obviously in a normal aircraft these two arms would be identical or very close to identical. So basically the, um, the amount of adjustment uh, won't be as, as great as this. Um, however, I just wanted to show you, uh, for all intensive purposes, I wanted a, a working example where you can actually see on this meter that it's made a substantial difference to the amount of current that's being drawn. Um, like I said, we're only getting just over 100 milliamps, whereas before, you know, we we're picking up to 225 or just over 225 milliamps, so almost full scale deflection. So just that quick um, servo match has made heaps of difference to the amount of current being drawn. If we actually go back into servo matching, if you go into the manual uh, start matching option, um, you can actually edit, actually let's select the other servo, we want to select servo B not A, so I'll just go back to output B, and um, if you notice now carefully, um, we have the, the radio itself can move, that's fine. And you'll notice those five triangles uh, across the bottom of the screen. So you'll notice there's one in the middle for our center position. And if you move the stick to the right, there's a triangle there. And there's also one at the far end of travel. But you'll notice, if you look carefully at the triangles, they're not quite spaced evenly, especially the one on the right-hand side. So the first one on the right-hand side, you'll notice, is uh, adjusted quite a bit. And that's where we're getting sort of the maximum peak current, around about there. So it's actually shifted, the auto servo matching shifted it to take into that into account to try and minimize the current draw. So if you want to adjust it manually, you can edit those uh, little points at the bottom one at a time. However, the auto servo matching feature works pretty great. It's quick and easy and it does work. Um, you can see it on the meter. It's, it's made quite a bit of difference to the current draw. Uh, as a matter of fact, if I get out of this, if we um, change that to AL, that probably doesn't matter. We can reset all the servo matching curves to back to default. Uh, basically clear the settings if we want. But before I do that, I'll just run through the servo um, travel again. So watch the meter. So there's about 75 milliamps there, peaking up to around just over 100. Maybe 100, and just under 125, but you know, not much more than 100 in its worst case position. Maybe about 110 milliamps. Now, let's reset uh, the servo matching to clear it. So there's a reset menu here. We can reset the gyro, but we're going to reset the servo matching. So are we sure? Yes. And you notice as soon as we do that, the meter's jumped up a little bit. So we've reset it. Now let's have a look at the meter. Bang! Up to, you know, 225. Remember we are getting about 225 initially. So we're back to the same thing of getting that, you know, 225 milliamps of current draw. So as you can see, it makes a substantial difference when using the auto servo matching feature. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. I just wanted to show you how well it works. It works extremely well. And you, know, you can plainly see the difference made in the current draw for this servo here. Okay, thanks all for watching.